Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at something extremely useful, and it's called the Aerial Work Platform, which is this lovely thing I'm currently standing on. So what it is is basically a small block, very compact atmospheric thruster ship that features two batteries, a medium cargo container, a welder for you to fly up to a base for you to fly up to a ship, do some building work or repair work without needing to use your jetpack. Very useful if you're using any kind of punishing mods or playing in scenarios such as the surviving in hell where you have very limited usage of your jetpack and this would be perfect for getting things done. So for example, you could be building a giant ship such as the Starship over here. We can hop on onto the helm, we can fly all the way up. We've got a handy little camera so we can see exactly where we're going. We just come and scoot all the way up to it. So let's say we want to build on this section, come close as possible, there we go. And we can start using our welders on the front there to do some repair work. Or we can turn around onto the side, get all the way up to it. There we go. And now actually use our tools to start repairing it and doing all that. But anyway, pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, the aerial work platform is 136 small blocks using the Heavy Industry, Warfare 2, Wasteland and Sparks of the Future DLC packs. We've got lots of information about it on the Steam Workshop page, such as why it was built, and a scenario where it was used in. So give this thing a thumbs up, bring free camera back over wherever it's gone, there it is. We'll have a quick look around the outside, we'll fly around for a bit, and then that'll be that. So all the way up to here at the very front, this is what we get. So front and centre, what we got is a camera which can be very useful for aiming that welder. And of course to make sure you're not going to bump into anything and damage the aerial work platform or the thing you're trying to repair. We've got two wasteland spotlights to light up the darkness, then we can see a bunch of atmospheric thrusters to help maneuver this thing around. We also have some fantastic use of our neon tubes, adding as a guard railing all the way around this, with some even better use for our hazard skin on our armoured panels. Moving around onto the side, that is all we can see, so even more atmospheric thrusters, a battery, where there's one on the opposite side, a medium cargo container in the middle, with a connector at the back to recharge this thing up. We've got some more great use of our wasteland spotlights, adding as brake lights, then another useful camera to help reverse this thing and of course to dock it up. Moving all the way up, we can see just how well our neon tube has been set up all the way around this thing. And then looking down, we do have an access point for our medium car container at the back there. There's another access point right under your feet. There's our helm to drive this thing around. Then just looking at it from the top. There we go. Moving all the way down and underneath it past our connector, that is all we can see. So we can clearly see our medium car container. We can see our batteries with some magnetic plates on it and even more abstract thrusters and the bottom of our welder. And so there we go, that's a very brief look around the outside of the aerial work platform and it does look great. For me personally, what I would do to this is remove the welder at the front, maybe make it a bit more open so you can walk up to something and weld it yourself. That's only if you want to use the handheld welder instead of the ship welder. Yes, you're grabbing hold of my character, bringing up the HUD, these are the controls we get. So number one is going to be to use that welder. We just do that and we use our mouse to activate it if we've got stuff in our cargo container. Number two is going to be to turn on and off our atmospheric thrusters all the way around the ship, with number three being for our camera at the front. Number four is to toggle on and off our welder, so we can make sure we don't accidentally click it at the wrong time. Number five is then for our batteries to auto or recharge, and if you set it to recharge, you will come crashing down to the planet. Then number seven is for our antenna on and off, number eight is for our magnetic plates on our batteries to the bottom, and then number nine is for our connector to lock and unlock it. Onto tab number two, we then got some thruster overrides, so if you want to move this thing forwards without pressing anything on the keyboard, without pressing anything on the controller, you can do so. There we go. Then just turning that off and coming to a stop, we'll do a quick little thruster test, then we'll just go and slam it into the ship right next to me. So moving forwards, this is what we get. We've got some nice speeds, being there's only two atmospheric thrusters at the back. Coming to a stop, we should be the exact same, because we've got the exact same setup at the front. So there we go. No need to do a 180, because it'll have no effect. Moving left, there we go, nice little speed with that. Moving right should be the exact same, there we go. Moving up, we should have some fantastic speed, there we are. Then coming to a stop, it's going to be slightly slower because we have no thrusters pointing up, so we will come to a stop naturally, which will be a lot slower. So do be aware if you become very heavy handed when moving up, because it does take quite some time to slow down. As I found out when I was playing around with the Starship in the distance there, I wanted to go all the way up to the top to test out the welder, but of course I held it down for too long and ended up nearly going to space. And of course finally, just waiting the mouse around, this is what we get with gyroscope controls. It's got a nice sort of control, it's generally what I prefer when it comes to a small fighter, and it should do very well because it's not too floaty and it's not too heavy. 
as for that, there's not too much else to talk about. It's very self-explanatory what it does. A very useful thing to build in your world regardless of if you have a jetpack mod or not. There'll be a link to it as well if you want to download and play around for yourself. Highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.